Hey guys, uh, just a quick video here showing off something I picked up at a ham meet uh, yesterday. Uh, I got two of these actually for free. This is a magnetic ABTU8131 VHF power amplifier. And um, this one's actually serial number 14. And the other one I got is serial number 102. And uh, what this is, is just a power amplifier. You put 20 watts in and it'll give you 100 watts out. And as you saw down here, it covers 144 to 174 megahertz. And um, I've tested both of these and they both work. So I'm just showing off one here. I'll, um, I'll walk you through uh, the signal path in here and I'll show you the test setup that I've got to check that it's working. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see that it's, uh, it's actually doing what it's supposed to. Uh, so this here is the input. It was back to 20 watts input. It does work with lower powers, but the gain is very non-linear. Um, so if you put half the power in, say 10 watts in, you're not going to get 50 watts. You're going to get much less than that. Uh, so input here, this is an end connector. Goes through here. This is an RG223 cable. Um, this is something I've added here, and this is where I'm feeding power in right now because the fuse holder is missing the front part. Uh, so normally this was one piece of coax. I'll, I'll tell you later why I've done this. Uh, it goes in here and into this thing. And this is somewhat uh, unusual solution. It's actually a quadrature coupler. Um, what you need to know here is that this is basically an attenuator. Uh, you get the input here and it goes out up here and then by controlling these two pin diodes on the quadrature ports, which are these two, um, you can control uh, how much attenuation is put in. Uh, normally if you, if you use these pin diodes here, which are very high power types, you can short the quadrature output and that will reflect power forward. And if you don't do that, then these terminators, which are in parallel, high power 50 ohm resistors here, um, then they will absorb most of the power and you won't get very much going out here on this coax up here. Um, it's actually live right now, but yeah, it goes through here and it's attenuated and you can control how much using a control voltage put in here. It goes out through here and into this, which is another quadrature coupler. And this is the actual PA. It's made with uh, two boards running in uh, quadrature. And um, Signal Path has done some videos on how that actually works. But there are a number of advantages to using two PAs like this with quadrature couplers. Uh, so the quadrature coupler is on the output. This is the mismatch absorption resistor and it goes out on this port up here into a low pass filter, uh, which is quite significant, quite a large filter. And you can see it's made up of several ceramic circuit boards. Also built in are forward and reverse power couplers, uh, which are output on these leads here and the antenna output goes through here. It's grounded at two points and goes out through this end connector here. Um, there's also some stuff on the back. This is the main power inlet. Uh, this, these were designed for, for rack mount, you can see. It's got a large heat sink all over the thing. It's all aluminum. Um, this is a power control pot. This sets the regulation level. And this board here seems to primarily just light up a, um, a res uh, an LED on the front as well as um, I think that this is a read relay. I think it goes to one of the plugs back here to just let you know that it's at operating power, uh, that it's in regulation. So there's a the feedback chain from, from here. It goes through this board as far as I can work out and then into this transistor circuit here, which controls the bias of these of these uh, attenuator uh, pin diodes here. Uh, 
what I believe this was used for is something called uh, Offentli Landmobil Telefoni. Um, roughly translated, that's uh, Public uh, Land Mobile uh, Telephony. And that uh, was a very early manual switched uh, mobile telephone network used in Norway from the late 1960s until it was decommissioned in 1990. Uh, but uh, the um, it was replaced effectively replaced around uh, 1981 when NMT450 went online, which was a much more advanced network with automatic switching, in-band signaling, automatic uh, handover between base stations and stuff like that. Uh, with this this sort of system, you just had uh, basically a set of the VHF repeaters running in half. Um, running a full duplex and you either had half or full duplex radios and uh, you would just listen on a call channel there was a bit of selective uh, call built in but basically when someone called you as far as I can tell you would just get the operator yelling at you on the call channel to go to channel 5 and then you'd go over there and take your call and you'd have to go back and let them know when you were done quite a hassle compared to, to modern uh, calling mostly used by doctors and uh, truckers and stuff like that. Uh, NMT450 very quickly replaced this for most uses. Uh, so, uh, it runs off 14 volts as well. And uh, Magnetic AB being Swedish, they made a lot of telecom equipment back then. They were, I believe, absorbed into Ericsson. And they were sold under the Ericsson name for quite a while as well. Uh, date codes, I found the date code here is 1975 and the date code here of 1973. So I think it's from around um, mid to late 70s. Um, you can also tell that Magnetic AB used to make uh, military equipment like radar simulators and stuff like that as well. And uh, you can see the wire looming here, all very high quality. Um, one big loom for the entire rig. Basically, boards like they, they used this design for a number of years, as far as I can tell. I have some 1980s equipment from them that, that's built on a similar sort of chassis and similar construction techniques. Uh, this board here appears to be a Teflon laminate, um, and it's also very similar to their uh, UHF power amplifier boards. Uh, couplers as well, um, similar but uh, in in size and stuff like that for UHF, but I believe a different construction technique used. Um, yeah. So, test setup. Um, for my signal source, I'm using this ICOM F110 Land Mobile. VHF transmitter. This will do 2.5, about 12, and then 25 watts output. And I'm just manually keying it here. It's set for a ham radio frequency, which is which is in the range of this unit here. Um, oh yeah, well I remember it. This is a very large Sener diode. That's basically the input protection. And also notice there's a feed through cap here. But yeah, that, the output from that goes into the input here, and then the output from that needs to go to a dummy load, but I also want to measure it. And uh, to do that, this cable runs over here into a bird 43 watt meter. And I've got a 60 watt dummy load here, but it can handle 100 watts for short periods. But it does get heat up quite quickly. And um, to get a copy of the signal, I'm using this coaxial dynamics directional extractor that provides a 50 decibel reduced uh, copy of the signal that can go to a spectrum analyzer and it's also directional so you can use this to read SWR. Um, this is fairly expensive but uh, with a spectrum analyzer or a power meter this one thing can basically let me uh, sample the, the signal, plug in a dummy load all that without having to buy a bunch of very expensive uh, slugs to cover all power ranges and all um, all frequency ranges. And I don't have a 100 watt VHF uh, slug. 
Um, so the sample output here runs over to the spectrum analyzer. Oops, looks like I left the video light on. But yeah, the spectrum analyzer has been configured to read in watts and I've added the correction factor to it. So uh, let's see, I'm just gonna hit the key here and you can see I'm running on low power and we're only getting about half a watt out. And that's because this thing is set out to two and a half watts. So the gain of this amplifier is actually negative at low power. So if we switch it to low two, that's around 10 to 12 watts. And you can see what we get now. That is about almost 40. So there's a very big difference there between um, four, between uh, two and a half and, uh, and 10 watts. But you can see this light here, they will use the fact that's output power. There does not come on when I key it. And uh, that LED is controlled by this port here, which reads the forward power sample. So what I can do now is I can go to high power, key it up, and let's see here. That LED came on, you might be able to hear a little, um, the sound of the relay clicking in there, actually. And if we look at the power output here, we're getting almost 100 watts. And um, keep in mind that this thing is not 100% accurate and I haven't calibrated the setup, so I think it's pretty good uh, to get that kind of output power. Uh, in order to get that kind of output power though, I did end up uh, retuning uh, these trimmers around here to, um, to get the most gain at my frequency of choice. Uh, it will work for other frequencies. For example, I think we could, um, for example, choose a, a maritime frequency. Uh, we'll have to um, increase the span here a bit. And let's see, we're, we're getting close there to 100, 100 watts. Let's see if we can see that. See if it's still pretty good at, uh, at a maritime frequency, for example. I actually have a maritime license as well, so I don't feel too bad about, about having these frequencies programmed in. Uh, but I don't use it as a maritime radio because I don't have a boat. Um, yeah. Uh, with this trimmer on the back, you can adjust the power down. That actually affects the bias here as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, what I wanted to do with this thing was add a automatic transmit receive relay because when I plug this thing in I can transmit with a lot of power, but I can't hear anything because I would have to go back through the power amp in order to get into the receiver. So the sensitivity would be awful Just useless uh, So I'm gonna add a relay board You can see I've already put in some spacers here and this is an annoying thing because there are holes here with reasonable spacings. But on the later unit, you can see there's a wide spacing here and then a short spacing here. And on the later unit, this is flipped. So you have this spacing is down here and this short spacing is up here. So I routed the board based on the other unit. Here's my paper template uh, of this VHF transmit receive board, it'll sort of sit up there. But when I mount it in here, it'll be all the way up here. And instead it would ideally be like down here instead. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna break the signal path here. And this is a bracket that I made very quickly that can have two SMA connectors. So the power will, in the default state, go in here, go through a connector here and then on another coax and into the input port on this board. That will be switched through this relay, this relay and then out to the antenna which will be a short PNC cable coming from here and into this plug right here. When you want to transmit, um, you'll enable the, your transmitter and a power reading, you'll be transmitting straight into the antenna so you'll get a power reading here the board will sense that and then automatically switch over 
there's a, a trim pot in on the board to let you select that. And um, when that happens, it'll switch over. So now the power will go in into the input port over here through this relay. It'll switch over and route it out to this connector, which will go back and into this cable through this uh, couple, uh, coupler attenuator and through the PA. And the output of the PA will go into PA in on the BNC and through this power relay and out to the low pass filter. Um, yeah, that's, that's the basic idea here. And um, what we can also see if I just press the preset button here is I'm back on a ham frequency now. It's a very clean, very clean output. Tiny bit of second harmonic, that's it. So, and uh, let's see here, yeah. The signal is basically at 0 dBm and we have better than 60 dB suppression of harmonics, which is excellent. This filter here is really doing a good job. It's a, a second and third harmonic notch filter for the VHF band. Um, yeah, once I get this board, I'll try to install it, see if it works. Um, it's been made in such a way that it's impossible for the output of the PA to be connected back to the input or to its own, to the PA input, because that would cause it to oscillate. Uh, so any relay failure here will um, hopefully not destroy the unit. Um, yeah, I um, feel this now. It's already gotten sort of lukewarm just from that small amount of keying I did. Um, I also did a calculation and found that the overall efficiency of this system, if you include the power used by this thing generating 20 watts, is about 50%. So you use about 200 watts of electrical current to produce 100 watts of, uh, of VHF output, which is uh, not, not bad. Not bad at all.